for months now, I've had this WaveShare, what is this thing called? The Pico GPS L76X. I've had this thing sitting on my desk waiting to be uh, put into a project and I've had something in mind for it. This is a Raspberry Pi Pico GPS hat. So it has a Quectel L76K GPS module on it. It has battery backup so it can store like GPS satellite constellation information and a real-time clock signal in there so it can keep the time. And then you plug a Raspberry Pi Pico into it and you can build your own little GPS module for location or in my case, a clock. So the great thing is my dad and I finally finished routing a GPS antenna signal cable into the studio here at the desk so I can do my little timing experiments. And I have this antenna cable coming straight from my GPS antenna out back through two distribution amplifiers. I can plug it into here. This is the antenna input for the module. And I have the Pico plugged in and I have this clock plugged in with a little, a little code. And let me find a uh, little power plug for the Pico. If I plug it in, we should get this. This means there's no satellites yet. It hasn't acquired a time signal, but within five or 10 seconds, this should switch over to a timing signal. And you'll see that the, uh, this LED here will start blinking. This is pulse per second, at least ideally. This might take longer because it's been off for a day or so. There it goes, 1140. And let's check if that is the time I'm getting on my clock, 1140. So it is working. And uh, the, the reason why I wanted to build this, so I have rack mount solutions for timing uh, that shows NTP clocks for master clock, but I don't have one that does GPS. And so far I don't have anything that does PTP. So I'm gonna do that in the future. But this I want to have in a mini rack. So I wanna have a clock face that shows GPS timing so that I can see if I have any signal issues with my antenna distribution. And I have it set up so that these cursors will blink when the GPS signal is active and when I'm getting a PPS out of here. If it stops flashing, then that means that the uh, GPS timing signal is lost and uh, it's gonna still run the clock based on the internal thing. Oh, look at that. If I move it around, it's kind of a little flaky. I might do a better connector for this at some point. But my idea is I'm going to take this and make a cutout in it for the clock face and then make something that will hold the Pico in on the back as well. So that's my next step. And uh, what I was doing was I was measuring one of the blanking panels that I have for the mini rack that uh, came from DeskPy. And I got those measurements pretty precise onto this 3D printed panel. Uh, you can see that it's pretty darn close there. But when I put that panel onto a mini rack, I found out that the, uh, the holes they're okay for that metal spacer, but for a 3D printed one, you can see that the holes are a tiny bit off and there's a little bit of a gap at the top and bottom. So I'm gonna make this a tiny bit bigger. And I've been slowly over time, you know, learning the ropes of, of Fusion 360. I made it so that I can actually go back and edit a sketch and change dimensions. This probably still looks a little crazy to some people that know Fusion better than me. But now I can just change a dimension like this and all the hole spacings and everything will be correct and all the extrusions will update and everything happens uh, correctly now. So that was not the case in the past. I uh, used to mess things up. Anyway, I have another version of this printing off here on the bamboo. And once it's finished, I will test fit that and then I will work on the cutouts to put the clock in one of my mini racks over there. So. That's the next step. Uh, there's a lot more to do with mini racks too. We got, uh, there's the desk pie. This is the Super 4C or something like that. It's a new four node cluster board. And they also have these cool DIN rail mounts now, which I have not tested yet, but I want to have a mini rack that's all DIN rail. That would be kind of fun to do. Anyway, yeah, so I'm gonna keep working on that Fusion 360 cutout for the uh, clock and we'll see where we get in this video. So I've been measuring things out on here to try to place it. I think I'll have this on the left side and then an antenna cut out for the GPS antenna. I might also do PPS if I can figure that out. I have an email in to WaveShare to see if there's an easy way to get PPS on here. Uh, but I measured all the parts here that I'll need, all the critical measurements to build out this design so that I can mount this hopefully flush with the front of it. And this can maybe snap in or slide in and have enough space for the micro USB cable to plug into it still. Uh, but one thing that's nice about uh, 
using open source designs like this guy from Adafruit is they have schematics and uh, drawings with dimensions on them, which makes it a lot easier to uh, integrate these things into a 3D print using CAD. Anyway, so thank you to Adafruit for that. Um, I bought this thing like many years ago, probably three or four years ago now, because I was going to build a different type of clock, which I'll still probably build that clock. I have an idea for another type of clock, uh, but this will go into here for now. Okay, after uh, fighting with Fusion a bit, I have this design, which I think will work to have the clock face protrude through uh, kind of an extrusion through the, the uh, 3D print and have these four screw holes have screws hold it in from the back so that the front side, all you see is the clock, which hopefully will work. And I have it printing in extra draft quality, just really quick on here so that I can uh, check the fitment of everything. Okay, got the print back. Let's check how this fits. Let's see, whoop. Oh. So it'll be like this. And this will come in right here. So that is uh, like almost perfect fit, but I should probably make that dimension a tiny bit bigger to fit that clock face. Um, but on here, the dimensions of this are pretty close. Uh, I'm going to guess this guy, maybe. Yeah, look at that. Perfect first try. And now the fun part of trying to get this thing to actually go in. I was going off Adafruit's uh, dimensions, and their dimensions look spot on, on in terms of this. I think I just need to make these a little bit bigger so that the front face fits in because I printed this at one millimeter, which one millimeter is not quite enough. So quick test fit, and that actually works really well. There's a tiny bit of bend inward on these screws, so I think that I'll just make the holes out by like 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters off of uh, what the dimension is on Adafruit's CAD. Okay, obviously there's V1, V2, this is V3, and uh, I, I didn't quite have time to finish off the design last night, so I just printed this off to see the fit of the Pico inside of here. And it actually holds in fine just with friction, but I'm going to put a little clip right here, and that should hold it a little better. And then the last step will be uh, putting a little SMA hole over here so that I can have the GPS antenna sticking out of the front. And uh, I'm also going to put a little hole in on this side so you can see the LEDs if you kind of look and... Uh, I guess you could just see the reflections. Maybe I could put a little mirror in there or something. I don't know. Um, the other option is I could put a little hole here so you could see through it, but then it doesn't look as clean. I like that clean look. Anyway, the uh, <laughs> I figured out that I put the holes for the screws on this guy too far out now, so I need to fix that again, again. That's kind of how 3D printing goes for me. I fix something and then I fix it the wrong way, so I have to do it all over again. Anyway, we'll see if V4 is going to be the one that ships. So I hope I got everything finished off. I put in two little uh, clips. I don't know if you'd call them clips, just little bump outs up here. And uh, because there's a little bit of flex in this, it should let the pie just snap in here, I'm hoping. And I cut out a little arch here so that you could see in here, there's a couple status LEDs in there. And I put on an SMA connector. So let's see how this thing uh, fits together. Okay. The uh, clock should slip in here nicely. Let's see how the, the alignment is on the holes. Might still have to tweak that a little bit. Let's see. Looks like this hole is pretty darn close. That hole, that hole's a tiny bit this way. So I might have to fix that. Um, I don't know. What I've noticed is that there's enough. <laughs> it's pretty strong in here, so I don't, I don't know if I even need to do that. Uh, you can see that it, it's holding in nicely without any screws. So, I don't know, I, I might fix those screw holes just so that I have the right model. But this, I'm hoping, will slot in like that. And then if it pops down, there we go. Nice. That feels really good, actually. Okay, and then let's see if this will fit in here. Yeah, it, it, uh, it looks like it's the tolerances on that little flat spot aren't enough to make this little flat part of the uh, connector kind of retain itself there, but that's okay because this is this is a jack that you put on and tighten down. I'll grab my pliers and get it nice and snug on there. 
I also noticed that these little pins on here are kind of like flatter this way and they're more square in that direction. So I took all of these plugs and rotated them 90 degrees. If you don't do that, they kind of pop out really easily. Uh, and I'm, I might make a better connection than this anyway, because someday these could work their way out. Anyway, let's plug it in and see if it actually works. And we're plugged in with no, no light. What's going on there? Everything's approximately 90% harder when you're trying to film it too, because you can't even see what you're doing because you want to have people see what's going on. So I got that. And so we're plugged in and I'm not getting anything anymore. Did I, did I screw something up here? There we go. Okay. Let's see if we get uh, the clock. There we go. Uh, 1419. Is that what time it is? Oh yeah. 219. So. Maybe I'll add an option for uh, setting it to 12 hour time at some point, but 1419 it is. I am ordering some tape to go over this and also some automotive UV tint film. Uh, what I found online is you can buy filters for this. I don't, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to see what time it is on camera and you see a little bit of flicker. That's because these lights are so bright compared to the, the rest of this that uh, it's okay to see in person, but without a filter, it's kind of hard to tell, especially on camera. Actually, I do have Kapton. Let, let me go try a little bit of Kapton tape and we'll see if that helps at all. It actually does help. Uh, so it gives a little bit of a yellow tint, but now it's still not great on camera. And you see all that flickering down there. The flickering is from the way that the, the driver is using like pulse width modulation. But if I turn down the camera's brightness, you can see that, uh, that basically when you put a UV filter, it kind of does that, but even more so and should make it show up a little bit better. But this video is not the end game for that. Um, I'm going to put this into my mini rack at some point and then we'll see kind of the final product out of that. This is stuck on my finger. Get off, get off, get, yeah. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm hoping to also get PPS out of here so that I can have a GPS disciplined oscillator basically in my mini rack. Uh, this one is destined for my house. This was just a, a fun project that I've had parts for it sitting on my desk and over in the boxes over there. I've had parts for this for months now. And in, in, in the case of this screen, I actually bought this like a year and a half ago. And I finally put it together and it works and that's kind of cool. So I will try to get this up on GitHub so that you could build your own if you want. Um, I don't know if I'll have that done by the time I post this video or not, but that's it for level two Jeff. And uh, you can see this is how this is actually a good one Four four prints before I got to the final version. That's better than a lot of uh, 3D printed objects that I work on. And this thing isn't quite perfect. There's a few little improvements I might make or I might not, uh, but they always say don't let perfect be the enemy of the good.